Thank you, Ali. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all of you for joining wherever you are. I'm here in Silicon Valley, California. It's such a pleasant morning here this morning. It's about 7 o'clock, 7.05 a.m. Um, first of all, I want to take this opportunity, particularly I want to thank Ali uh, for moderating this webinar and also Mile for giving me an opportunity to share some ideas about marketing leadership, branding, and relationships. I love marketing. I have taught this uh, field for the last about uh, 10 years at several schools here in California, particularly at the University of San Francisco, National, and California State University. Um, so let me begin by saying some brief opening remarks, if you will. Um, let me bring this uh, to the full screen. Okay, so. All right, uh, I'm hoping that you're able to see the full screen on your computer or wherever you are. Uh, yes, sir, indeed we can. Okay, excellent, excellent. So let me make some brief remarks before we begin the, the discussion. Uh, first of all, my goal this morning or this evening, wherever you are, is to make you think. What I want to do in this webinar uh, particularly if you're in the marketing field, if you're a director of marketing, VP or marketing analyst, or any position you're holding in the company or your own company, what I would like you to do to think about this new era of marketing where the social media and digital marketing has taken such a prominent place. So what I want to do is, as, as we proceed into the discussions, I would like really like you to think through sort of decoding the customer and the company or the firm relationship, what it means to you, how this has evolved, and what in your position, how can you change or enhance uh, the aspects of marketing in coming weeks and months. That's the first point. The second thing that I wanted to mention is that the discussion this morning is primarily based on the new research. Uh, you will see in, 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 in the slides, uh, upcoming slides, a number of research papers, articles. I have brought this research uh, into what it means about marketing leadership, what it means today, what it means to cultivate relationship, what it means to build the branding of uh, products and, and services. The third point I want to do is I would like you to question your own company's uh, marketing department, particularly their structure, their budgeting process, allocation of resources. How are they doing and why are they doing the way they are doing? So really think through these, these topics. And the last two things I want to discuss in this uh, webinar is that every company has a C-suite, meaning that you know, you have senior leadership or management of people who actually run the show. You have a CEO or CFO uh, and many other folks who actually run the show of the operations in uh, the, the entire company. So I, I would like to make some, some brief remarks on that based on my, my experience in the marketing and also the new research from the case studies and the research papers meaning that who should be there in the C-suite and who is there right now in your company? Do you know these people? And finally, I would like to make some recommendations, some suggestions for, for you and for Mile, for Saudi Arabia, uh, based on my, my research and readings, how can we take the company or institution or organization where you're working, particularly in the Middle East and Saudi Arabia, to really to the next level. And the goal is to have a competitive advantage, a real competitive advantage. In, and, and finally, um, you know, marketing is such a fascinating field. It's too important to ignore marketing. And, and I really mean that because if companies do marketing well of their products and services, whether during a recession or economic downturn, that company is bound to uh, rebound in the sense that 
you know, you will go through some hardships, but at the end of the day, you will come out as a winner. But marketing is really too important to ignore. So with that, let me um, uh, let me begin the uh, the discussion. Uh, so as you can see uh, on your screen, topics of discussion this morning is decoding primarily what I wanted to do, sort of decode the customer firm relationship. That's what I would like to do uh, in, in this webinar today. Um, and there are a few topics, as you can see, um, importance of building marketing relationships, building brands, uh, what it means to be a customer, uh, cultivating customers. Um, and I, I really want to spend some time on uh, the marketing department itself. What is the structure of market department today? How this was uh, five years ago, how this should be today and, and three years from now or five years from now. And, and, and also some time on, on return on marketing. Um, I have a few slides on customer lifetime value. Initially I thought that I'll spend a lot of time, a lot of equations and, and problems, but I had minimized that. I wanted to do another particular seminar, hopefully, uh, if, if, uh, if that's okay with my uh, perhaps uh, uh, in the spring of next year. So let me uh, continue. So if you if you think of marketing, there are a number of expertise, there are a number of fields of study, uh, there are a number of areas that marketing has to deal with. So in terms of holistic marketing, especially in the last three to seven years, what has happened is that more and more companies are now interested in not just a product, not just a customer, but they want to look at marketing's impact on itself, on internally, uh, or, or how they can integrate all the resources uh, by having relationship, and at the end of the day, to have a performance, so it's sort of a holistic approach to marketing. For example, internal marketing, you have senior management, very, very important, the marketing department, and a number of other departments, IT, human resources, business development, and, and in terms of uh, integrated marketing, you have product services, uh, different channels, communication channels, uh, and our focus of study, the relationship marketing, part of that, uh, primarily uh, what I believe today and, and going forward, there has to be a complete focus on customers. Because, you know, if there are no customers, there is no business, there is no company, there are no products, there are no services. So we'll talk a lot about what it means to be a customer and how we need to really focus on customer. And of course, at the end, performance marketing. So see, keep this in mind of the holistic approach to marketing. Don't think of marketing as just one department in a company. And when, whenever there is a problem in the company, uh, either a recession or economic downturn, the first thing that most senior leaders of the company do is to reduce the budget of marketing. And I think that's a suicidal mistake. And then we'll see why uh, and how that, will, that can be changed. Um, so let's move on. So this is how I look like today. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, you know, I am heavily involved uh, in a lot of foundations here in Silicon Valley, particularly the Rotary Club, Library Foundation, and many other foundations I do uh, nonprofit uh, voluntary work. So this was back uh, just about a week ago, the Rotary Club of Santa Clara, where I live. And then uh, we're building a new library. It's called Northside Library. We were there just a few days ago. This is how I look like. Just wanted to make sure that as I'm speaking, uh, you're looking at the person. Here I am in the old triple area. Okay, all right, let's move on. Um, uh, Saudi Arabia is not new to me. I have been there a number of times. Actually, uh, six months ago, back in February, uh, I was invited speaker at the Imam Muhammad University in, in Riyadh, uh, presented a paper there. It was a very interesting paper in the sense that if you look at the title here, uh, you know, the title was FaceTime, Teaching with Tweeting and Facebooking. You know, how can you teach marketing with these two new tools we have uh, with the tweeting and Facebook? It was a very good study. The paper was published. Uh, if you're interested, I can send you the link. Uh, so let's keep uh, moving. So I want to start off with the opening statement. 
and and I want you to think through with me on this. Marketing is not only dash job. What does it mean? Um, it could mean many things. But to me, I think marketing is not only marketing department's job. Because most people think that, you know, if I'm an engineer, I'm working for Google or Facebook or Microsoft or Cisco Systems. Uh, my job is to do coding, programming, and I'm done. I have nothing to do with marketing. I think that's a very wrong concept, particularly these days, uh, with the kind of uh, social media that we have right now. Because if somebody comes to you and shakes your hand and says, you know, I'm so-and-so, I work for Google, and I'm an engineer, suddenly in your mind, you're not so much focused now on this person, but you're thinking of Google or Facebook or, or Twitter. Twitter is going uh, public in a few weeks from now. So if somebody comes to you from a Twitter company and say, I'm so-and-so, you're suddenly now thinking of Twitter, right? So, so, so basically, all the employees from CEO to the last person in the company is the face of the company, meaning that directly or indirectly, they are marketeers. job. Okay? All right. So the first thing. The second thing I wanted to say here, sort of a quiz. Uh, in marketing, messaging is the key. Because how you, 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 how the customers, particularly from a customer's point of view, how they view what perception they have in their mind of that particular product or a service. So messaging is the key, right? So who controls the message? Can you type in the text chat area here? Who controls the message? If you're listening to me, can you type in the text chat area? In the box? Yes, folks, uh, there is an option to share your views in the text box or in the chat box based on the question, who is controlling? Okay, I see some notes coming in now. Um, let me scroll down. All employees in the company from Dr. Muhammad Rashad. Okay, all employees, uh, any other thoughts? Uh, Anyone else? Mr. I want at least three. Ahmed said communication department. Okay, one more. Mm. Says uh, marketing communication department. Okay, so those are all great answers. Those are all wonderful answers. But, but if you think about this, it's the consumer or the customer that controls the message, not the brand, not the communication department, not anyone else, especially these days, because of the Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and the social media we have, what has happened in the last five to seven years, it's a complete paradigm shift now. It's the consumers is controlling the message. Just a couple of weeks ago, there was a festival full of marketing in, in, in England, in London, uh, from October 8 to 10. And the survey was done, very fresh survey. As you can see, uh, over 48% of the people, 40 plus, they believe, they agree that it's the customer or the consumer controlling the message, not the company, not the brand, not the products or services, all right? Okay, wonderful, so let's move on. Um, and, and I think marketing has to be relevant. If the company wants to survive, marketing has to be relevant. It cannot function as a silo in some corner in a company and, and nobody has anything to do with that. And, and the reason I say that is because, because of this digital marketing revolution, which is continuing to unfold, uh, and I think is that we are at just the beginning stage of what is coming in the next five, seven, and 10 years. It's a complete revolution is taking place with the technology, the way it's going. Um, so the senior leaders or the C-suite people, those managers, uh, they need the help in order for, for them to take the company to the next level. And the goal is to have a competitive advantage. And this is really coming from a research 
uh, just this year, McKinsey uh, did some survey and research, and, and this is what they're saying, that the senior leadership needs help for competitive advantage. But the question is, who are the senior leaders? The CEO, CFO, and who can help? How can we help, if you're a marketeer, to the senior leadership? Because you know, it depends, a lot depends on these leaders, uh, particularly with respect to customer lifetime value, or return of marketing, CLV and ROM. This is very, very important. This is the bottom line of the company. And, and there is no way out, right? So who are the senior leaders? Can you type in the text box area? Is just the CEO or the CFO? Is there anybody else? Who are the senior leaders, folks? Hopefully, MDs, managing directors, GMs. Managing directors, GMs. Uh, customers. One more. Customers, there you go. Um, okay, so let's see. So, okay, wonderful. Those are great answers. So let's come back to who the senior leaders are. Uh, but but the question is, why marketing leadership? Because if you are an engineer, if you are a programmer, uh, you work for Apple. You're designing the next iPhone, iPhone six or iPhone seven, right? Um, and you are in the lab. You're doing that. But the actual product, the great product, is done by the marketing department. And this is coming from where I live here uh, in, in Silicon Valley here, Intel, the biggest, one of the biggest uh, employer and company. Uh, what they're saying is that, you know, it's great that we have this product that was newly built. It's an amazing iPhone, right? But it's the marketing department who packages that. So you see the value of this leadership at the marketing department is so crucial because what leaders do? They influence, they have followers, uh, they, they bring change, they have a responsibility, a number of roles they play. And the marketing department is the center of that, right? Okay. Um, the other thing is in terms of relationship, um, you know, most of us uh, at some point we had a chance to wear a jeans, uh, Levi's brand or, or some other brand. Um, the uh, the CEO of Levi Strauss, San Francisco based company, what he says that people ask me what has driven the resurgence of Levi's brand. You know, many years ago the company was going down but now has rebounded and his answer is product, product and product. But then he goes on to say that among all the initiatives that we are pursuing to strengthen the company is creating a great product relationship is the most critical to our success. Meaning that the relationship with whom? With the customer is so important. I just had a note at the bottom here you can read, and this PowerPoint is also available once this is done. So let me move on to uh, why relationship marketing is, is such crucial and important. You know, what has happened uh, about 15 years ago or 20 years ago, uh, the, the subject or theme of relationship marketing was, was very alive. But for some reason, people forgot about uh, you know, continue to uh, cultivate the relationship with the customer. So this has been around for a while. But if this is true, my question is, should we just focus on relationship marketing and or building brands? That's the point of this discussion. Um, and, and you have to think through this in your own mind, in your own company, uh, what should be the focus? Uh, is the focus is to build a brand, be the number one brand, uh, and continue to make a lot of money, or cultivate the customers, have a long-term relationship with those customers, right? Uh, building brand, I mean, there are a number of brands here, Coca-Cola, Starbucks, Amazon, and eBay, and Google, a lot of, you, you can have all kinds of colors of these, these brands and these companies. Um, but is, is, the, is the idea of the brand is to, to stay on the top as a number one brand at all cost, or, serve the customers so they can continue to be on the top as a number one brand, for example. And, and hopefully some of you have taken some marketing course. If you have read uh, Kotler's uh, new marketing uh, management book, uh, he defines marketing in these one, two, three, four, five, six words. Has anyone seen this? 
CCDVTP. Do you know what it is? Does anyone know what CCDVTP is? Okay, I'm not getting any answer. Uh, so uh, CCDVTP. Uh, Go ahead, Ali. Somebody is typing uh, in the text box uh, area. It's a still song so far. <laughs> <laughs> CCDV is is the basically is, is is marketing create communicate deliver value to the target customer at a profit that's it that's marketing CCDV TV so create communicate deliver value to the target customer at a profit that's what marketing does right okay so so how does this happen um, and, and, and you see that Apple for so many years has continued to be number one in the top three to five brands for the last so many years. Uh, recently, just last month, a couple of weeks ago, came out with a new iPad, uh, which is thinner, lighter, and faster, right? But how does Apple continue to be staying at the top for the last so many years? 2013, still uh, number one brand, right? Um, what are they trying to do? Why are the people lining up? And this is literally happens here in Silicon Valley. Any new product that Apple releases since uh, iPhone, particularly iPhone series began, people line up, line up a night before the store opens at 9 a.m. in the morning. Why are they doing that? Why do they want to stand for a number of hours and be there in their stores to get their hands on that product, which is iPhone 5C, iPhone 4, whatever the, uh, that uh, brand is, right? So how are they doing that? Because Apple has successfully done the brand loyalty, the create that excitement, the passion, and the prestige. People feel great, you know, when they have the iPhone in their hand, they feel that they have achieved something, and, and perhaps so, right? Um, and then, and what the other thing, because of that branding and that, that uh, number one spot that they have taken, right, number one spot, uh, what they're trying to do is, uh, is build this new company. It looks like a spaceship. Perhaps if you can Google, you will see this. It's going to be an amazing building, amazing building here in, Cal in, in Cupertino, California. But let me continue. Uh, some basic, very basic things of marketing. Uh, we have gone from 0.1 to 3.0. Uh, we are focused on product. Then we are focused customer. Now we are we're thinking of value. What is the value that marketing is providing? Uh, now what we want is a mind and a heart and, and all their body and the soul. We have gone to different stages of marketing from uh, just a selling stage to the 4P stage, product list, promotion, to the STP, segmentation, targeting, positioning, and to the CRM stage. And also now what most companies are doing as they're building their products, uh, they are doing the co-creation, meaning that they're getting feedback from the customer as they can continue to build the product. Uh, this is a fantastic book if you had a chance to read uh, The Shift. Uh, from It goes through a number of stages that we have gone and now we are at the customer's focus stage. Um, let me continue to move on. So from mind and heart to the spirit, from profits to return to sustainable compassion, making a difference in the lives of customers, right? Um, involving your customers in the planning stage is very important. You know, you can't just wait for the product to be out and then get the feedback. More and more companies are, are, are making sure that they are getting some feedback as they are in the development stage of that product or service. Lexus is doing it, Lego and Harley Davidson. A number of companies are doing that. Um, if you look at the view, four views of, of marketing from a CEO point of view, uh, it's basically it's the CEO. But that's a really a, a, a wrong concept and perception. Um, and the reason is because the leading question, if you think about it, really, if you think about it, the leading question that we have uh, is, is that how can companies build a relationship with their customers? How do they do that? Um, I mean, the simple answer could be getting to know your customers really well, uh, because what they need is the value. You need to think beyond the loyalty, 
different types of relationships. For example, Apple, as I said, just to go back to the Apple of, of in the last, especially in, since 2007, I think 2008, what Apple has uniquely done is that open stores, uh, at least here in the United States and Europe and many other places, when Gateway Computers, if you remember, was closing, closing down the computer stores, physical stores. And at the same time, Apple began opening those stores. Uh, this was a brilliant idea. And, and the whole point was, what they wanted to do is it, to touch the customer, to make sure that they have that relationship, the physical relationship, when they walk in the stores, touch and feel of their products uh, in the Apple stores, right? Uh, and, and again, this is coming from uh, a new research study uh, that was recently conducted. Uh, and the relationship has to be, it can be just one-sided. Uh, you know, for example, uh, IKEA does this is a wonderful job. And, and the same concept, when IKEA opens its stores, people line up a night before to, to be the first 200 or the first 50 so that they can get the discount and, and whatever the benefit that they're getting. But IKEA has really developed that customer loyalty and the perception in the minds of the people that this is a great product, right? And the last point on this is that um, here in America at least, uh, you know, the healthcare has been in the news for the last almost six months to a year. And when the Obamacare opened up the website, probably you have seen it, it has been a complete challenge for a lot of customers. It has been a fiasco. But, but the government and the people who are responsible have taken the responsibility in saying that, you know, this was not been a problem and we are going to fix it. So the relationship, it can be just on the customer side, it has to be on the company side. Um, continuing the relationship aspect of, of uh, building that relationship with the customers, right? Uh, why, do, why do you feel that the customers are attached they feel close to that product or a service is simply because of the benefits that they are receiving. Um, and that will build the loyalty uh, with that brand or, or that product or the service. So, so, the, in, in, so in terms of decoding the customer firm relationship, uh, the suggestion has to be that, that the marketing department or the senior leadership of marketing they have to do something different to continue to tailor their benefits that they're offering so the customer receives those, uh, those uh, what they need or the value from that product or a service, right? Um, the, the another point, if you look at this uh, figure, I'm going very quickly, I know we are approaching time. Uh, if you look at this, this graph here, this slide, customer loyalty to the firm, the customer preference. What, what you see on this slide is that um, the more, whether it's a low or a high, if it's a low, then, then marketing needs to really trigger some relationship activities. Even if it's high, they continue to stay in touch with the customers through multiple touch points, through email, through all kinds of uh, tools that they have at their disposal so they can continue to have that relationship with that customer. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to uh, bring to your attention, this is again from a new research, is that you know, a lot of customers, when they get their hands on a product or a service, uh, if there is a complaint, you know, the it's a damaged product or you did not receive what you were expecting, uh, it's a different product, so there has to be a good compliant system, compliant handling system, and the staff really has to be motivated to serve the customer so they can continue to build a stable customer portfolio. And this is very, very important. Uh, sometimes it's, it's a, it's a, uh, it's, it, the relationship can continue or the relationship can, can break. And uh, simply because, and you know these days, what's happening now, if you serve one customer, and that the relationship goes bad or goes sour, they go on Facebook, they go on Twitter, they go on all kinds of uh, uh, media communication tools to talk about the product or service. And really now the company has to be uh, in a damage control situation, right? Um, I'm going to skip this. Um, there is one more uh, fantastic book that has uh, 
uh, that was released a few years ago. Uh, it, it talks about a, really a business model for 21st century. And they have listed about eight characteristics. And one of the things that I really like uh, about this is that when a product or a service is, is really released, uh, because what people are looking for is just not for a product or service, but some meaning. They just do not want a possession. They want to have some meaning with that product or service. And if that is the case, the company cannot really just focus on the profits. They have to bring some excitement, some emotional uh, experience, some social value for that product or service, right? Uh, let me talk about a change because uh, change is important uh, as the digital revolution, as I mentioned, is taking place. And, and in the, from the management perspective, you know, the change has to go through a number of stages, sense of urgency, uh, coalition within the company, uh, developing a vision, communicating that vision to all the stakeholders. Um, and, and, and the most important thing, I think, is that when the change happens, if that happens, you have to make sure you stick to the change. Uh, you can't have that change for a month or two, and then you go back to the same old model. It really can't function like that. Um, and on this graph, as you can see here, there is always, especially when you restructure the marketing department or senior management uh, team, there is always some resistance. Uh, the percentages you can see stakeholders who watch the change from the sidelines, they have no opinion. So there is a section in the company where they don't say anything. Whatever happens is fine. There are some folks who really champion their advocates and they bring the change. Uh, some folks will support. Uh, some really doesn't matter. The status quo or some oppose the change, right? They will resist. And change is difficult, right? Um, and I want to show you this graph. Uh, in order for a customer really to, to purchase the product or a service, something has to trigger. For example, you're watching a TV. You see an ad of, of a men's warehouse or Joseph A. Banks, for example, these companies who, who basically have men's uh, you know, suits. Uh, you see a product. You see a price. They say, buy one, get two free. And, and if you are at that stage where you're thinking of buying some suits and you get a good deal, something has to trigger so you actually go to the store, go online, do the purchase, right? So the ability and the motivation has to be there. But who will create that? Who will create that? So some aspects of marketing has to take the lead here in order to trigger that behavior. Um, I want to jump to quickly to your customer lifetime value. Uh, the goal of marketing is to make sure that the customer is not just coming once to your store or visiting your website just once. You want to make sure that these customers keep coming back, buying from you. Uh, so this simple equation is the average value of sales, number of repeat transactions, and if you average retention time in months for a typical customer, Let's say, for example, the lifetime value of a gym member, you know, you go to the gym for a workout, you spend about $20 a month for three years, the value of the customer will be 20 times 12 times 3, that's $720, and then it's about $240. Now, this 240 number is important because what companies do, as long as they are spending less than this amount to gain the customer or keep that customer, they will continue to spend that. Because in the long run, they are making a lot more money from that specific customer. And this is why we say in marketing is that it's difficult to acquire a new customer than to keep the existing customers. Because you have a base. If you continue to tailor your services to those customers, the value of uh, the lifetime value of that customer is much, much higher. Uh, this is a graph, as you can see on this slide. Um, typical value of, of lifetime value of the customer is actual value, the potential value, and there is an unrealized value. The unrealized value is that if the marketing efforts, promotion, anything that marketers do, if they step up to the plate, that lifetime value will be much, much higher than the actual value of the customer that you will receive in a year or two years. 
Okay, so the un, there is a great potential value compared to the actual value when marketing is really national, right? Um, and obviously, you know, the goal of marketing is to make sure that there is growth, uh, customer growth, super growth. That's what products and services or branding does for the company, right? Okay, um, I want to say, spend a minute on this case, uh, Conrad's Acura car, uh, customer lifetime value and return on marketing. Uh, if you read uh, this case, in the fall of 2006, premise of Conrad was examining the course of the company quarterly results. He was concerned that despite a healthy economy, sales as a dealership were stagnant. And the question is why? The vice president of sales of Conrad's Acura was constantly coming up with a new marketing scheme to boost sales, but the president had difficulty determining how successful past marketing efforts had been increasing profitability. He needed a way to put the numbers into context. What happens is, what it means is that marketing department is proposing a budget to the senior management. Um, and if the sales are stagnant, it's nothing is improving, then the CEO and the, and the other folks on the C-suite, they're going to question the marketing department saying that, you know, we spend this money, nothing is happening. How do we do this? So, so basically, uh, now it's in the, uh, the ball is in the court of a marketing department. So what do we do? So what strategy should Conrad implement to improve the company's profitability, right? There are a number of things you can do in order to retention the rate of uh, the customer by continuing to maintain. Um, perhaps, you know, if this is a car or a dealership, you can provide free oil changes, customer reward programs and rebates, uh, continue to stay in touch with the customers with postcards and emails and, and invite them to your dealership to exchange or trade or retrade uh, their, their vehicles, um, increase the advertising cost, perhaps focus on niche marketing, higher end cars, a number of things that could be done uh, to improve that stagnant stage. Uh, perhaps they can also do uh, the markup. Most cars have some markup, you know, if the value is $40,000, perhaps the markup is $45,000. You can either reduce or, or increase depending on uh, at what stage of uh, the season is, and perhaps you can also uh, invite the customer to shorten the return time of, of their, their vehicle, you know, invite them to buy or trade in the new car or purchase a new one, right? Okay. Um, the, 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 the couple of two more things that I'll open up for, for, for discussion. In the last few years, in the last three, four years, particularly after the recession in 2008, there has been a significant debate that the value of marketing department is really decreasing, meaning that, you know, it, it's, it's been difficult uh, for the senior management to really continue to support uh, and have uh, additional allocation of resources to the marketing department. But the research shows that the more strong marketing and sales department are, uh, the better for the company. Um, and if you look at this graph or this figure, as you can see from the research model, the influence of marketing department, uh, influence of sales department, R&D, marketing functions, at the end of the day, if there is some differentiation and there is a cost leadership, the firm's business performance uh, will continue to, to be better than what it was uh, a year before or three years before. So the, the value of the marketing department cannot be increased. I'm going to skip this. Um, um, and, and this slide, what it says is that uh, sort of a rethinking of marketing communication, meaning that you know, it's if, if, if everything is going one-sided from the marketing department and nothing is coming back from the customer, there is a problem. So in order to improve uh, the continuing um, you know, better relationship with uh, with the customer. There has to be a two-way street, right? Um, influence of marketing department. Uh, obviously, it has to be organization wide. It can be, as I said, uh, just at the uh, silo level from marketing department. Because the goal is to improve the business performance. That's the idea, right? Um, and there are a few things that I mentioned from this uh, research model, the accountability, continued innovation, creativity, customer connection, uh, integration of marketing department with other departments, uh, because the whole point is the goal is to have 
a significant influence of marketing department, particularly on, on the top management, uh, for them to respect, uh, to influence the decision, right? Okay. Uh, let, me, uh, let me skip this um, because it talks about the marketing department. Again, uh, it's a similar research that has come out which says that the more capability of marketing department uh, that they can show and produce, again, uh, the, uh, the business performance uh, will improve uh, and will continue to improve as long as there is innovation uh, in, in accountability. All right. So let me go back to the quiz. So who are these senior leaders? So you said a few things. Uh, um, and, and I think is that if you look at this figure, the CMO, the Chief Marketing Officer. So there are two points of view that are coming up in the last three, four years. One is who should lead uh, the marketing department and should this person be on the C-suite? Many companies, Chrysler, a number of other companies, for example, have a CMO. And that CMO, Chief Marketing Officer, is now sitting in the C-suite. So what it says is that where does the power of the CMO, and the goal of the CMO is to make sure that there is a voice of the customer, voice of the marketing department is heard by the senior team. Because the more they do, the more they do, uh, then the, the bottom line of the firm performance, the company's performance, will be much, much better, right? So the TMT or the top management team, they need to have the perspective of marketing really does, right? Okay, so the, there is an importance of, of the CMO. The other view that we see, we have been seeing now, and let me go there. I'm going to skip a few things here. Um, before I do that, uh, in the last five years, what we have seen is that, and I said in the beginning, that whenever there is a problem, Whenever there is a challenge, economic downturn or, or a recession or the company or the country is going through some challenges, the first thing that most companies do, reduce the sales force, reduce the marketing personnel. I think that's a, it's, it's a disaster strategy. It's not a fruitful strategy. Um, especially, as you can see, this year, uh, there was a research survey done by uh, uh, Council of uh, Marketing CMOs and what they have listed here is that 77% of CMOs are earning a salary of 100,000 to 400,000, and they continue to receive bonuses. So there is a value of this CMO uh, adding that bottom line value to the company, to the senior management, right? So see, the, the other view that I was talking about is that should there be a CMO or a chief customer officer? which should be in the C-suite. For me, what I think, it really doesn't matter whether it's a CCO, Chief Customer Officer, or CMO, the Chief Marketing Officer. As long as the focus is on not the product, focus is on the customer. If that can be done, it really doesn't matter what title you give. Because what's important is that the the way you want to structure your marketing department, I particularly invite the, the senior VPs and senior directors of marketing or uh, marketing analysts, whoever is here now who has joined this seminar and who will see this, is to think through this marketing department. What is the structure of marketing department you have right now? Uh, obviously, most companies have a CEO, but within the C-suite, besides the CFO and, and, and CRO and many other folks who are there, of a group of nine to ten people, perhaps fifteen people on the board. Is there a marketing person on the board or not? Is there somebody who has the customer perspective that can bring to the table? So the structure of the department is really, really important, uh, especially in this digital marketing that is taking place uh, at this point. And the focus again has to shift the old approach and the new approach. This is a Harvard Business Review article. Uh, you know, the focus has to be on customer profitability, customer lifetime value, customer value, and customer equity share, not the product or the brand or the sales. So as long as that is happening, either through a chief customer officer or through chief marketing officer, it really doesn't matter, right? Um, case in point. 
just a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, Apple, again going back to Apple, uh, has uh, now brought a person from Burberry, uh, famous company, uh, and they have created, uh, after Steve Jobs now, a new position, Senior Vice President of Retail and Online Stores. And they have realized that things are changing. We cannot function Apple as the Apple it was. So they're bringing a lot of changes, structurally, structural changes to the C-suite. And the fact that they bring this person who will sit with the C-suite and report to the CEO, it really changes the game and sends a message out uh, to a number of companies uh, that the time has come that there has to be some structural change to the, uh, the senior management board or top management team. Uh, and, and really, I think it's a step in the right direction for most companies to follow. Return on marketing, I just want to say a couple of things and then open up for the floor for Q&A. The, the goal of, you know, when we do all of those things that we talked about, structural change, focus on customer, uh, and variety of things that we have discussed, the goal is to make sure that there is a return at the end of the day, whether you call a return on marketing or marketing return on investment. How do we influence the customer or the consumer, uh, particularly with the allocation of resources? Marketing is the last department when the budget allocation takes place. Um, and, and a lot of these, is particularly the IT field, high-tech companies are spending uh, a lot more resources just on R&D, on, on engineering uh, departments and sessions. And as I said, marketing is the last, last department. But I think this is not a great strategy because those engineers who are building the products, they need to be packaged well so that the ROI or ROM or MROI is there at the end of the day, right? Um, I'm going to skip a couple of slides, talks about the marketing again, how uh, ROM is, is influential and how ROM is, is important. Uh, one thing though that I want to mention on this slide is, for example, a marketing campaign may aim to change the perception of a brand, but there is no ROI for that. All you're trying to do is if, if there is a challenge or if there is a problem, even if there is nothing else in the minds of the customers of that product or service, right? All the company is trying to do or the marketing department is trying to do is to build a positive image this year. They are not expecting any return and that's okay. Because customers, as long as they have the right image or the perception of a product or a service down the road, there is a chance that they are either going to come back to the company or uh, you know something will trigger and they will do that transaction and perhaps uh, improve the lifetime value. Um, again, this talks about the MROI. Um, the, on this slide, I wanted to mention here, there is always a challenge within the company between the chief financial officer and the marketing department or the VP of marketing or the chief marketing officer because the CFOs directly or indirectly do not see the value of marketing is, is really doing uh, to the bottom line of the company. So as long as the, the suggestion here is that as long as the marketing is strategically aligned with the rest of the organization and have that influence to improve the image of marketing uh, and provide the leadership, uh, perhaps the CFOs would not be uh, questioning um, whenever there is an allocation of resources uh, for the marketing department. I'm going to skip this also. Um, some recommendations, let me quickly uh, go through that. Two slides. What are some of the recommendations, for example, you know, manage transformation. Um, you know, there are a number of things you can uh, think of, aspirations, leadership, process, energy. But how do we do those things? Um, when, when we say aspiration, what does it mean to, uh, to aspire? Uh, establishing well-defined stretch targets, meaning that there has to be achievable, realistic targets. Leadership, strong leadership, strong uh, senior management team is important and perhaps the CCO or the CMO uh, should be at the table. What does it mean by process? Organizing a clear structure for change. 
because and then change there is always a resistance as we have seen in the graph. Uh, most people don't want to change. If things are working fine or there is a status quo, they don't want to bring any change. Energy, uh, frontline employees, uh, give them some ownership. Ensure that, that they have really creating an impact with the customer, perhaps launching a large scale uh, collaborative planning effort uh, um, with the employees, uh, get them engaged to pro provide proper training, proper resources for them to, uh, to bring that change. A couple of examples here, uh, Post Italian, the Postal Service Italian uh, from Italy, uh, a few years ago, the post, you know, post office or the, the organization institution in Italy, they were going through really a number of challenges. They brought this person uh, and then uh, he really made those changes providing uh, these uh, um, aspects of leadership, aspiration and process energy created the change and, and, and now this company is, is, is profitable for the last six, seven years to Malaysian Airlines. Same example. But remember, I think what we have to remember here is that no matter how strong the leadership is, change is difficult, change is sometimes impossible, people think change is challenging. And the change it can be usually 100%. If somebody achieves a 50% change, that's a significant change. Uh, for Saudi Arabia, Middle East, uh, as I said in the beginning, marketing is too important to be left to just marketing department. And again, that's a disaster. Market requirements should not be left alone. The senior management, the C-suite people should be heavily involved in the marketing department. Uh, some suggestions are organized, probably not by function, but by business purpose. What is the goal of this product or service? You want to acquire customer, you want to grow, and you want to retain them. Uh, you need to understand and meet the customer needs at a profit, obviously. Uh, digitize. Uh, this is digital marketing age. Uh, personal, one-to-one -one marketing, socialize, use the tools that are available, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatnot. Strategic uh, in the sense that there has to be a voice of the customer at the C-suite. Technology is important. And, and, and finally, innovation. Innovation is so critical for a company without innovation, bringing the new products and services, the company will not survive. And if, if, you, uh, if you think about what Peter Drucker said, the business enterprise has only two and only two basic functions, marketing and innovation. I repeat that again, marketing and innovation. As long as that is done, uh, then the company is in good shape. And finally, for, for the senior management, a complete paradigm shift uh, needs to take place. It needs to happen. Uh, most companies do, most senior folks do, the whole customer engagement day, you know, all day, all they do is just get on the phones, walk on the floor, go to the stores, uh, do the transaction, stand at the cashier's office, uh, just to learn what customers are thinking about their products or services. The second point is be mindful of the board's composition. I've been repeating that, uh, making sure that the CMO or the CCO, somebody with Particularly, uh, public sector experience is important, perhaps the campaigning skills. And the last point here is that um, if there is a joint presentation by the CMO or CCO along with the R&D director, so that the board is constantly getting a, a one voice message in the sense that this new product is being created in the lab, in the research and development lab, and then marketing is packaging it properly. And then the goal is the ROI, ROM. And if that is done properly, then obviously the senior management or the top management team uh, will uh, pay attention to what marketing is. So we go back to the holistic marketing concept, meaning that marketing, if especially, especially for people who are aspiring for you know, enhancing their job opportunities or if they're thinking of a corner office on the top floor, they really have to pay attention to the marketing from a holistic point of view, internal marketing, integration, relationship and performance. If that is done, then, then I think the marketing department will continue to shine and, and, and prosper. So Q&A, are you ready for marketing leadership? 
through relationship marketing and or building brands. Questions? Well, comments? thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Nadim and folks. So we are open for the Q&A. You could either uh, raise your hand. There's a hand icon available on your console. So if you could click on it, I can give you a chance to speak to Dr. Nadim, or you could put your questions in the chat box, and I'll be happy to read them over on your behalf. There's already a hand raised, so let me go to a uh, raised hand. There was a hand raised earlier. Okay, just a second. Oh, we have, uh, sorry. Uh, we had, uh, yes, uh, Dr. Muhammad Rashad. Dr. Muhammad, can you hear us? Could you please introduce and ask a question? Yes, I can hear you here. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nadeem, for such a superb uh, a presentation on marketing. It was a very eye-opener in terms of the voice of customer. I'm uh, Dr. Mohammad Rishad Faridi based in Riyadh and I'm in, also in the department marketing. And uh, my quick question and a quick comment is that uh, uh, I understand, yes, uh, that Apple has uh, taken the CEO of Burberry, a UK-based company, where I think they're having a blend of uh, uh, the Apple an innovative company and Burberry, uh, which is more, you know, a fashion brand a synergy between these two. And perhaps uh, to add up to this, Walmart, the, uh, the world leaders in retail, also is thinking in that same model of like online retail where they're, they're like copying how Amazon does this marketing processes. So that was the comment I had. And the question I, w I wanted was that uh, is it possible like uh, a company or brands which are more innovative oriented like Gillette and, or Apple have a synergy with uh, uh, middlemen or the marketing intermediaries in that uh, sp specific markets or pockets where they, the market middlemen are also innovative in the sense that they have a, a unique way of personal attention to the customer. So a synergy between a company making an innovative product as well as a middleman which is giving a very highly personalized service, a blend of these two may perhaps give a competitive advantage to the customer. So something like that, is it possible? Uh, Dr. Ishad, uh, thank you for the wonderful question. I think it's possible as long as there are a few things that takes place at the same time. Number one, when, when we're talking about primarily I think what we are saying is that it's empowerment to those folks in the middle. Right. Whenever a company gives that, that uh, uh, that power to those folks, uh, right. as long as as long as the what they do, how they deal with the customers, if it's in line with uh, the objectives and goals of the company, because you know I think you don't want to just uh, give um, power or empower those folks uh, at the front line right. and, and to to do whatever they can do to regain the business or gain the customers' confidence. Uh, but there has to be some structural guideline how they do that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's possible and I think it should be done because at the end of the day, the goal is to serve the customer. They meet their right. needs, what they're looking for, the value that they uh, are looking for uh, from a company, either a product or a service. I think it's possible and I think it should be done. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks. You're welcome. Well, thank you, Doctor, for your question, uh, Doctor Muhammad. Uh, let me uh, let me move to uh, let me try to mute your microphone and move to the question box. Uh, there are some questions already in the question box. Let me read the short ones. Uh, there's one interesting one in one of the slides, Doctor Nadim. You mentioned customer controls the message. Can you give any example and how? Uh, yes, and, and you know, I think I, I sort of alluded to, uh, which is, uh, I gave the example of Apple, what Apple is doing. The reason they have been successful and continue to be successful because of that feedback uh, that they receive from the customers as they are uh, building those products uh, for the customers. And, and I think the opening of the stores, that was a very brilliant move by Steve Jobs when the other computer store, Gateway, was closing down in 2006 and 2007. 
And if you have visited any Apple store, you may have seen that the genius bar they have, that was again a brilliant idea, was that, you know, if you have a suggestion, if you have any questions about our product, you come to the genius bar and they have empowered those folks who are there to, to really serve you whatever you need. And Apple continues to be a shining example for uh, that the message is in the hands of the customers or the consumers. And there are other number of companies. For example, if you take the example of automobile industry, uh, which I alluded to, Lexus, for example, you can actually go on their website and build that car from the scratch. So there are some fundamental, you know, basics that they have, but you can choose the color, you can choose how, what features you want. You can basically design your, your car and that, get that car what you need. So, so I think consumers or the customers are in control of uh, the product or the company or the brand especially now because of the social media that we have. So the power has really shifted from the brand or the company in the hands of the customers. Because of a lot of feedback that the companies are receiving through the social media tools, they are constantly realigning and, and accommodating those requests from the consumers or the customers. I hope I answered the question. Well, indeed, I think. Uh, let me move to another one, an interesting one. How do you compete with your competitors to win customer relationship loyalty, considering all multinational companies in the world are now adopting best practices of marketing leadership available through training, education, and awareness, mentoring same new concepts of building relationships? Excellent question. Two points. One is the differentiation. The other is the cost. So let me, let me say uh, something about the cost. Reducing the price of a product or service does not guarantee a real competitive advantage because you, know, you have customers uh, from a broad uh, spectrum of, of life we have. There are stores where, for example, Tiffany, Nordstrom, I'm using American stores here, Nordstrom, Tiffany, and other high-end stores, Burberry and Gucci and, and, and whatnot. Now, they have a, a niche customer base they have, meaning that if somebody wants to buy a $5,000 purse, some lady wants to buy that, she's not going to go to a Walmart or a Kmart or, or some other store. She's going to go to Burberry, to Furline, those stores where she can spend that $5,000 for a purse and really feel good. So, so the cost cannot always be the primary factor to attract the customers. There has to be quality. Some people are looking for cost, some people are looking for quality, some people are looking for a sustainable product. And differentiation, you can't be a me too product. You know, if, if Microsoft is doing it, I'm doing that too. I'm giving it a cheaper price, right? That may work for a few months. It cannot continue, so there has to be some differentiation. For example, um, if a car company, if a car company has a, a variety of brands that they uh, that they have for for their customers, um, and so as the other companies, right? But there has to be some niche area, some niche marketing that needs to be done. That this company has only high-end cars, for example. Uh, you know, you have. Not everybody buys BMW or Mercedes or Ferrari or some other cars, right? So there is a there is a customer base for a product. There is a customer base for any other product. So differentiation, cost, I think, is the key. And the third point, as I said, is that you know, and and you can't be uh, all for every customer. You can't be. There has to be. People need to remember about your product. I want you know, suit. I'm going to go to men's warehouse, for example. I'm not going to buy from some other store because I know for a number of years this is the best place. They provide me at a reasonable price and a durable quality of a suit, right? So 
you, your company or your brand or a product needs some word or something that is stuck in the minds of the customer. One last example, MasterCard. When you think of MasterCard, what comes to your mind is priceless. Now, whether it's a priceless or not, that's a different story. But MasterCard means priceless. The service that they're providing is priceless. Starbucks, people hold a cup in their hand, Starbucks, they feel that they have achieved something, right? So as long as the passion and energy and that differentiation and the cost and niche marketing is there, your company is going to not only survive, but continues to thrive. I hope I answered the question. Uh, folks, I have also broadcasted a link for uh, a community which Dr. Mohammed Nadim is uh, administering and moderating on model community of practices on marketing leadership. This link uh, is available on your webinar console in the chat box, so you can join it for free. Uh, let me move to another question. Um, as of lately, it has been widely recommended that helping is a new way of marketing. In fact, help marketing is a strategy which companies are setting forth through viral and virtual communities. Please advise what are the major challenges in engaging customers through such virtual platforms? Uh, um, I think this is a excellent, another excellent question and this is really a challenge because the attention span of customers, uh, it's, it's difficult to get their eyeballs get their attention, keep them there, and keep coming back to a particular website or a particular community is, is, a, is an ongoing challenge because there are so many options that consumers and customers have. You know, today there is a Facebook, uh, there is a Twitter, there is something else. Tomorrow, who knows what's coming? Uh, there was expectation that the Google Plus is going to have more than a billion people. That did not happen. And Google is dealing with that. So, especially in the virtual communities, I think uh, a few things, attract and retain and, and, and continue to have some innovation in those communities so the people keep coming back uh, is a real challenge. And, and, and I think, you know, as long as you need to be realistic and have uh, a target or a milestone that needs to happen, for example, if your goal Let's just take an example of Facebook, right? One billion people from all over the world. Seventy percent of them are overseas. Thirty percent are, are from America. Uh, so that means the Facebook is, is much, much popular overseas. And the question is, why is that? Some, some research study shows that, you know, there has been some decline uh, in the number of people visiting Facebook for, in, the last, uh, in the last 12 to 18 months. Even if that is true, and this is a reason, a reason even if that is true, um, if you look at the stock price of Facebook, you know, started off with $38, went back to $18 and $20, and now it's back to $50. What does it tell you? You know, if a company has the attention of 1 billion people, the opportunities for that company is incredible. The Google share now is at over $1,000. Why is that? Now, is there a potential for Facebook to cross Google? Perhaps. Who knows? So in virtual communities, especially when people are coming together, expressing their ideas, sharing their pictures, their, their, their birthdays, their you know, promotions, um, and, and you have locking customers there, right? So the, the ad display, and in order to engage those customers on, on, on a weekly and daily, uh, in minute-to-minute, uh, second-to-second basis, are enormous. So, so the virtual communities, uh, they continue to have to innovate. And in order to compete with their, in their field, uh, you know, it can be an 18-month period as it used to be in the IT field, you know, every 18 months, some new product used to come. But 18 main month period now is reduced to perhaps 8 seconds. And I'm really serious about that because to retain the attention of those people who are coming and want to come back, to keep them there, it's a huge, huge challenge. 
and there is nothing, as I said, Peter Drucker said, the business function is, is marketing and innovation. And I want to stay with the comment. I hope I answered the question. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we can take just one last quick question before we conclude. How would you define a relationship with the customer to a layman in few words, in which you can perhaps explain what is expected out of this relationship for a customer to do what? So one word, <laughs> maybe a few words. Okay, one word a few words, has sorry. to be... Yeah. Okay, a few words. <laughs> Let me start with one word. I think the one really powerful word from a relationship marketing perspective, from a brand or a product or a company to the customer is service. What you need to do, you say to the customer, I am here to serve you, meet your needs, meet your demands, as long as it's reasonable possible for me to do. I'll give you one quick example. If you visit banks here in, in California, here in the United States, Wells Fargo Bank, uh, American Bank of America, uh, many other banks we have here in Santa Clara, right? Six, seven years ago, you walk in the store, in the bank, um, you go to the cashier, you do the transaction, you come up. That was the procedure. Now, today, November 4, you walk into any bank. I'm just giving you one example, what a paradigm shift that has happened. You're a layman, you're no one, you're just a customer. You walk in. There are three people, and I'm not exaggerating. Wells Fargo, Bank of America, at least one to three people standing at the door saying, good morning, sir, welcome to Wells Fargo. That's the first contact. And you're really happy. You know what? I'm receiving them. Somebody's opening the door for you. At the cashier, people are saying, good morning, sir, how can I help you? And, and there are other two people standing on the other side saying that what else we can do for you? Can we open another account for you? Can we provide some other benefits that we are offering for your mortgage, for other products? So what I'm trying to say here, for a layman, I think as long as you as a company, you as a product, you as a brand, your goal has to be, I'm here to serve the customer as long as it's reasonably possible for me. Because you, you don't want to lose and you want to shut down. You don't want to do that, right? Nobody does that. Business functions based on if they can survive and have that lifetime value. So service is the key. I hope I answered that. Service is the key, and that really brings us towards the end of the webinar. So I would like to thank you, especially on behalf of Wild, Dr. Nadeem, for this uh, wonderful presentation and sharing of valuable information with our participants. Uh, before we conclude, uh, uh, any concluding remarks that you would like to give? Um, you know, I, I think, uh, I, I hope that uh, uh, from this webinar, um, you, you learn something. I think what I would like to do, fundamentally, what I wanted to uh, achieve through this webinar is, as I said in the beginning, to make you think, to question yourself as an employee or a manager of a company or faculty member in your department, and really think about restructuring your marketing department. Number two is to perhaps to get the attention of the senior management. Because the voice of the customer at many companies is really missing at the C-suite level. So there has to be a person who provide that perspective to the senior management. And again, the goal is not necessarily for yourself so you become a CMO or CEO or CCO. But the goal is the return on marketing, ROM or ROMI. At the end of the day, when you achieve those things, so you serve the customer, right? So, so question yourself, go back to your department, uh, raise these questions within a, a proper forum in your company or institution, and hopefully that change that we are talking about, leading that change will come through and the companies or institutions continues to thrive and survive. Thank you very, very much. 
thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nadeem, for this excellent presentation. And thank you all of those who attended and for your questions and making it an interactive experience for all of us. We are recording this webinar, and the recorded version will be available on my community in the next couple of days uh, for you to access it via our even YouTube channel and download the soft copy presentation. So please stay tuned to my community. And once again, uh, Dr. Nadeem, thank you very much, and thank you everyone. I will be ending this webinar, so you all will be automatically dismissed out. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.